when the Curity Identity Server has been installed, we can run through the basic wizard to set up the system. When we log into the admin UI for the first time, we will be presented with the option to run through a basic configuration wizard. The first step of the wizard is to configure the license key. We can import it directly from the Curity dev portal, but we can also upload an existing license file. I have one in my system, so I'm going to browse for it and select it here, and we can see the details of the license itself. And click Next to continue the wizard, where we get to choose the database or the storage for token and session information. The Curity Identity Server has a built-in database, so I'm just going to use the local test database, but we could also configure a different database here. Next is um, configuring the database for users and credentials. Here we can choose the same data source um, and leave the hashing algorithm as default. I'm not going to configure an email provider here, so we can just click Next and the same for the SMS provider. Both of these can be configured later on in the Facilities menu. There's an existing SSL key generated uh, as part of the installation. I'm going to choose that, but we could also upload an existing or generate a new SSL key. Lastly, we get to choose what capabilities that we want to enable in this system. I'm going to leave all enabled by default and click Next. And then we can commit all of these changes to the system. And now we have a fully functioning installation of the Curity Identity Server. We can now go to Profiles and we can see here that we have an authentication service and a token service configured. In the Facilities menu, we can see the default data store as well as some of the cryptographical components, the signing keys, etc. And we have a credential and an account manager fully configured.